Hello and welcome to this episode of C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. Now, this episode is probably going to be my last one about lambdas for a while. I feel like I've done a lot of them on lambdas, but I really wanted to have some more fun with this idea of stateful lambdas. So this one is about advanced stateful lambdas. And in this episode, we're going to kind of pick up from where we left off on the stateful lambdas episode, but you don't really have to go back and watch that one necessarily. But I will try to link to it so that you can if you want to before you get to this one. But in our stateful lambdas code, we left off with something that looked kind of like this. And what we have done is create a lambda called fib, and every time we call it, it returns a different value in the Fibonacci sequence. And for the sake of uh, this example, we're going to be doing the version that does not start with zero. And if you go and look on the Wikipedia page of Fibonacci sequence, you'll see that there are options that start at zero or with one, but you end up with basically the same thing. So we get one, and then we call it a second time. We're going to get one. We call it a third time, and the third time now we're getting two, and we're going to start to see the numbers that we expect to develop in the Fibonacci sequence. 3, and then 5, etc. Now, what I really wanted to do is see if I could create a version of this that would let you interact with the lambda and maybe be able to modify its behavior somewhat. And I think I've come up with something, and I think it's interesting, and I don't necessarily think it's the kind of thing that you'd want to do in real-world code, but let's see what we can do. So, first of all, we're going to need to be able to return something from our lambda that would give us the ability to communicate information back to the lambda. And we're going to do that by declaring a local class here inside the lambda and actually returning that. So what we're doing here is we're creating a structure called results, and we are having references to the a and b values that are here in the uh, lambdas capture list. And when we instantiate an object of type results, and we are passing in the a and the b that are in the lambdas capture list, they are being stored as references here in the results structure. And then we're calling next. And next does this operation of adding a and b together and swapping the values around. And then it returns a copy of itself. So we have here our ability, we're calling fib, fib, fib four times, and we're getting to the fourth value. And then we could here say dot a. And if we do that, we can see that we've got the value 5, just like we expected from our previous version. And then we could do like really weird things, like say b equals 8. And now we've really started to mess with this whole process of the Fibonacci sequence by kind of injecting our own term that doesn't even make any sense anymore. So we went from 8 to 11, and that's not something that would happen in the Fibonacci sequence, because we would go 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, and then 5 plus 8 should be 13. So we already now have established that we've got a way of interacting with our lambda. And again, doesn't really make sense for the Fibonacci sequence, but it's still fun. But we have this problem that we need to call dot a here to get the value. So we can make this seem a little bit more natural by doing something that I really, in general, recommend against. But if we were to provide a implicit integer conversion here, then we would no longer have to explicitly ask for the value a. We would simply get that when the compiler reached the code, and we're getting 11 back here. Let's comment this out since it's getting in the way. And now also, so we can implicitly convert to an int, or we can explicitly call dot next as many times as we would like to, to increment what value we want to call. And in fact, we could make another version of next that is, um, lets you pass in how many values you want to skip. So now we've got this interesting bit of code, 
where we can say fib.next of 5 and get the fifth value back from the Fibonacci sequence, just like that. And all of this is stuff that the compiler is quite easily able to fold at compile time and just give us back the value. If you haven't noticed over here, we're getting a return value of 8, and it's, again, something that the compiler is easily able to optimize and give us at compile time in this particular case. So there you go. This is my notion of advanced stateful lambdas. Um, if you use this in real-world code and you uh, get in trouble at your next code review, um, don't blame me. Be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and check out any of the links below.